interesting plant species. It's a very rare tree species that grows in Australia, Idothea hardeniana, more commonly known as the nightcap oak. Okay. It was discovered only a few years ago, as it's so rare that it remained out of sight for a long time. We know there to be only about 200 in existence, and that they grow in a rainforest in a mountain range in the northern part of a state in Australia, New South Wales. Perhaps the most interesting thing about the nightcap oak is that it's very similar to an ancient species of tree that existed 100 million years ago. Fossils were found that look exactly like the nightcap oak. So, we know it's a primitive tree, a living fossil even, and that it's lasted all these years, having changed very little. It's likely a type of tree from which other Australian trees have grown and evolved. I have a few pictures to show you here of the tree's leaves and flowers. The flowers are these little clusters at the base of the leaves. Since the discovery, there are several questions begging to be answered. How or why is it so rare for one? How it reproduces and spreads is another. But perhaps these two questions are related to one another. What do you think, Jim? I'm not sure, but I feel like seed dispersal might be a factor. Like, um, if the seeds aren't able to disperse in the wild area, then the tree might not spread to new areas and grow. Great. And, of course, you can assume there would be limited areas where the tree could spread and grow because, well, its habitat must meet special requirements. However, that's not how it is. In fact, the suitable habitat, the rainforest, is much vaster than the few hectares in which the nightcap oak grows. As I showed you, the tree has flowers, and it produces fruit similar to a plum. The fruit houses a seed that's encased in a hard shell, which must be cracked or broken to enable it to absorb water and germinate. The seeds cannot germinate if they remain stuck inside the shell, and there's only a two-year window of time in which the seeds can actually germinate. In addition to this, there's a species of rat that feeds on the seeds. These two factors combined provide a good explanation as to why the tree doesn't spread much, as likely very few seeds actually make it to germination. But this only explains why the tree doesn't multiply well. It does not explain why it is so rare. So, it appears that it's quite good at preserving itself as a species, but it seems that the nightcap oak does not multiply well. In fact, there's some evidence that indicates that the population of the nightcap oak has remained stable over the last several hundred years. We can rule out it being a remnant of some huge population that's dwindled in the last few hundred years, and that its species is in retreat. So what we know is that the species doesn't multiply well or easily, but it can maintain itself, and that it's not endangered, just rare. Okay, not endangered, just rare. So here we go. All right, let's break some of these down. Now, obviously, it's a very rare tree. It grows in Australia. It talks, it gives a little background reference, okay? Uh, it's been, what, 200, uh, 200 in existence right now. They grow in the rainforest uh, forest in the northern part of Australia, all right? It's very similar to ancient species of tree that had, had existed about 100 million years ago, okay? So, the fossils um they kind of look primitive okay then it started talking about their pictures he showed some pictures why can't they spread um it's because one reason is because there are rat species that feeds on it uh but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily rare because of that rat species right it's because there are very few seeds that make it to germination okay and it just doesn't multiply stable over the last hundred years meaning that it's not in danger but it's just very rare all right, so let's break down this audio. Let's look at the question here. The question says, what are the main things about the nightcap oak that the professor discussed? The main things that it discusses. Okay, by looking at my, uh, looking at my notes, it talks about obviously the reason why it's so rare. And uh, well, I guess you could say what feasts on it, but it's the main reason and it's because it's rare. And that's what I wrote down at the very top here and then i wrote it down over here because it was mentioned 
All right. And then it talks about some specific details, too. There's like a development. So, A, it says factors about the size of the area where it grows. It does not talk about that. Now, he did say hectares. I do believe he said that. But it wasn't, it, it's not the main thing, right? B, its population over the last few hundred years. Okay. Is that, is that one of the main things? Is it C, what can be done to ensure its survival? He didn't give any suggestions. And D, why it hasn't changed much over the last 100 million years. So let's break this down. Okay. Now, use these techniques. Obviously, consider the main purpose. All right. Now, during the audio, obviously, you're going to take the notes just as I did so you have more of an idea. Now, number two, highlight the topic key sentences. So let's say descriptive adjectives, matching words, such as what I did at the very beginning, rare. Over here, rare. It talks about it being rare again. So I have a very good idea of why it's so rare. It's not in danger. It's rare because this happens and this happens, right? And then as an example, the lecture introduces a tree to the class and then poses two questions about it. Why is it so rare? How it reproduces and spreads? Then that's when he got one of the students involved. Now, if we look here, the adjective rare refers to the very low population of the tree, right? Therefore, the rarity, what I had written down of the population, is one of the central themes, okay? And its location of reproduction could potentially be a second thing, right? Because he gave the location, Australia, Northern Australia, he talks about the habitat meets special re uh, requirements, uh, it's a fruit encased in a hard shell, you know, uh, there's this, there's that. So he goes on to speak about that even more. Now, if you missed this point in the audio, okay, the professor and the student continue to discuss the difficulty in regards to the germination. Now, if you missed it at the very beginning, there's always a way that you can hurry up and get back at it. Hell, I actually got sidetracked and I was like, da 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 And I, I said, oh man, I think I missed some notes here, you know, because I was looking off at the sky that is no longer dark and no longer going to strike upon me with great vengeance. All right, so here we go. Going back into it. There are limited areas to where it grows, right? And then obviously the suitable habitat. Rainforest is much vaster than the few hectares in which the night cap oak grows. Now, even towards the end, okay, it talks about there are ongoing references to the small population of the tree. And again, me reiterating for the third time, it's not that it's in danger, it's that it's rare for a couple of reasons. So, Eliminate the bad answers, okay? Now, the answer, obviously, I put both A and B. Now, C is evidently wrong. So let's go back up to C, okay? I'm breaking this down. What can be done to ensure it's in survival? Like I said, there were no suggestions given, all right? Now, let's look at D. It's trickier, right? Because although there are references to fossils and the old history of this type of tree, we never learn or hear that it has changed and there is no direct reference to this point during the audio. All right. So if we look here, what are we going to go with? I put A or B factors about the size of the area where it grows and obviously its population over the last hundred years. Now, what I wanted to trick you with is because some people, they don't read the question all the way through and they would think that this is just a single answer. But here it says select to answers now i left that out inconveniently and conveniently <laughs> because i wanted to make sure that sometimes you could potentially miss out on points that are so easy to get just by not reading the entire question so that's why i put that there it says select two answers now normally what i would do is say okay i could find the two bad answers right here what can be done to ensure its, its survival no it doesn't talk about suggestions. How come it hasn't changed much over the last 100 million years? It's not about it changing. It's about how come the population hasn't risen and it doesn't talk about the last 100 million years. It's talking about the scarcity and why there are so little of them. So I would quickly hurry up and get rid of D, leaving A and B. Get what I mean? So the details are everything. We're gonna do another one, all right? We're gonna go back down. I'm gonna hurry up and make sure. Okay, and if you need to read over and hear this again, do so. We're gonna listen to behaviorism, all right? 
I'm going to go to the second page so we could have enough room. I'm going to throw this one up. Get your pen or pencil out. Get that piece of